Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, Professor of Physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of What to Look For in the Night Sky. We're talking about the week of January 13th, 2025. Uh, the big event of the week happens right away on the evening of the 13th. So Monday evening, we got a full moon, and that means the moon's really close to full. That means Mars is at what we call opposition, so that if you draw a line here, there's the sun, uh, there's the Earth, there's the moon, and there's Mars. They all make a line like that, and the full moon is as far away from the sun as it can get in the sky, so we've got this full moon. Uh, Mar uh, the moon is going to occult Mars for observers in Africa and the United States, so the moon's going to pass right in front of bright Mars. For me, in the middle of the, of the United States, local time, uh, Central Standard Time, it's going to happen a little bit after 9 p.m., so a little bit after 9 p.m., we're going to see the full moon will not be real far up in the sky. So we'll be looking east and the full moon is going to blot out Mars. Mars is going to reappear sometime around 10, 15 p.m. So a little before 10, 30, a little after 9, a little before 10, 30. Uh, your local time is going to vary a little bit. So look that up if you can or just open this window up. Start watching at 8, 30 and watch the moon get closer and make sure you're there to see this disappear. If you've got clear skies, this is the event of the week. It's what we want to, what we want to look for. We've talked about this a few times in recent weeks because we've had such good planet observing and moon observing. You know, we're not, the orbits of the planets are tilted relative to the Earth's orbit around the sun. And so we've got these different, and the moon's tilted as well, its orbit. And so we've got these different planes angled at different, and so they don't, it's not real often uh, that one object will pass in front of another object like this, but we, we've got this happening right here now. The next night, Venus is is making its way through Aquarius, and Venus grazes Lambda Aquarii, 3.7 magnitude star, pretty bright star, with big, bright Venus right there next to it. Remember, you go out in the evening sky, you, you look to the, the southwest, and Venus is the big, bright object that's out there. It's the brightest object that you see. Uh, Venus gets within a fifth of a degree. It degrees your finger at arm's length, recall. And so it gets within a fifth of a degree of Lambda Aquarii. That's a pretty bright star. You probably can see this, but with big bright Venus right there, it might be a little bit hard. Your binoculars might help you out. So this is going to just one night later uh, at, in, in the evening, uh, pretty much all evening as it gets dark here. Now, in the uh, Venus is headed toward... Uh, Saturn, we've been talking about this for many weeks now, so Venus is moving quickly against the background stars and closing the gap on Saturn, and you can watch that happen, and by the e evenings of the 17th and the 18th, Venus will have closed down as tight on Saturn as it's going to get it. It won't, uh, you know, it, it's 2.2 degrees is about as close as it gets, so a couple of finger widths at arm's length like that, and so it's not going to be right on top uh, of Saturn, but it's going to scoot right by it, and it just keeps blowing on uh, by. So watch that gap just keep opening up over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so you'll get to see Saturn there. Well, so while you're there, you can think about Saturn. Saturn's most famous feature is its ring system. And its ring system, so Saturn's got a tilt, uh, an axial tilt. There's a lot of planets, for whatever reason, have axial tilts in the 20-degree range. That is to say that their rotational axes are tilted relative to their orbital axes. The Earth is, is, is 23 and a half degrees, and Mars is, is in that range, and Saturn's is in that range. Uh, a little bit more, 26 degrees, if I remember correctly. Uh, I should have looked it up. Uh, and so it's got this tilt, and Earth's got this tilt, and so where are the rings? The rings sit around the equator of Saturn, and where those rings sit, uh, you know, like this, it depends on whether, where, where, how we see them depends on how Saturn is tilted relative to how we're tilted and, and whether how opened up and closed up those are. And right now they're as closed as they can get. So right now it looks like a knife edge. You look at uh, Saturn with your small telescope and you have a really hard time seeing the ring system. And so it's a good challenge right now. Well, you've got, while you're out there, you've got a small telescope uh, just drop uh, drop by from Venus down to Venus is, uh, that's we'll talk about this next week. We didn't think about this with, with planning timing wise here, but Venus goes through phases. So we'll talk about the phases of Venus next week, uh, depending on where Venus is relative to us and, and the sun. But check out the phase of Venus. I think it's about half full right now. I haven't looked at it in a telescope for quite a while. 
um, but I think it's about half full. And and so we want to watch that. We'll pick that up next week and have that conversation about the phases of Venus and Galileo and, and, and so on. Uh, but but just drop down and see Saturn's uh, drop down from Venus to Saturn, be just below there and see the bright dot just below Venus as Venus tracks by a Saturn and check out Saturn's knife edge rings. And then you watch it over the coming <clears throat> uh, seven or eight years and you'll see it open right back up. So you'll see dark space. Uh, where instead of the rings being oriented like this, they'll be oriented like this, and you'll be able to see dark space between the rings and the planets. Every 14 or 15 years, uh, that happens. The rings close up and open back up and close back up. So in another 14 or 15 years from now, Saturn's rings will be closed right back up and hard to see as a knife edge. It's not exact period, like the, an orbit or something like that, because it depends on both our tilt and Saturn's tilt, and we aren't always aligned in the same way when, when we get around there. So it, it takes, you know, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, years for that to happen. Uh, okay, so that's all great. And the uh, Jupiter's well up in the sky now by the time it gets dark. So you see Orion climbing up in, uh, to the, in the southern sky. Aldebaran is the orange star above uh, Orion. And Jupiter is the big bright object up from there. So you go from Aldebaran up to Jupiter over to the Pleiades and enjoy the, the open star cluster that is the Pleiades. And uh, while you're thinking about this, so this is what we were thinking about, uh, what I was thinking about while we're doing this. We're looking at Saturn's rings. We got a lot of full moon this week, so we got a, the moon's a problem, uh, blotting out stuff. It's, it's, it's washing out stuff we might otherwise see. Uh, the Pleiades might hold up to it. You might be able to see the Pleiades. But Jupiter has these four Galilean moons, and they have periods of, uh, you know, days. Uh, uh, maybe, what, I, what, 16 days is maybe the longest one. And so a few days, uh, they'll complete an orbit around the planet. So you can watch them dancing around there. You can see them with binoculars better with your small telescope. Okay, so you got a good pair of binoculars. You got 750s or something like that. You got a good pair of binoculars. Uh, that's what I often use to, to observe these things. Uh, you can uh, see these uh, and, and watch them move. So uh, while you're doing this, just go ahead and enjoy this view. If you got your small telescope uh, and you've been looking at Venus and Saturn, go ahead and look at Jupiter here this week too. Uh, I just looked this up online. I don't know where the moons of Jupiter are going to be from, from one night to the next. I don't pay, don't pay that much attention to it, and I don't observe it that much. But I looked it up online someplace, and it said that at 8 p.m. On, on January the 14th, you would see f three of the moons, uh, Io, Ganymede, and Callisto, all on one side of Jupiter, and Europa would be on the opposite side. And then I just looked it up a couple of nights later because these things are moving around so much. And a couple of nights later, Europa uh, was lost in the planet, either behind or in front of the planet. And uh, Callisto and Ganymede were stretched out uh, on opposite sides of, of Jupiter, right there, bright dots on opposite side. And Io was on, on the side of one of those. I don't remember which one. So anyway, you can watch this dance go on. Uh, might as well enjoy that this week. Uh, by the 16th, uh, the morning of the 16th and the morning of the 17th, the moon slides through the uh, slides through the sickle shape of Leo like this, and this is Regulus right here. That's Algeba up there. It actually passes between Eta, that star, and Regulus right there. But we we circled these two stars. These two stars are brighter. Regulus is the big bright star right there. Algeba is uh, a beautiful. It's Gamma. We've talked about it before. Gamma Leonis. It's a beautiful binary star. So you can you got your telescope out. Uh, go ahead and enjoy as the moon slides through there, splitting that star into its two component stars and enjoying that, that binary star. And that's what we got for you this week. Uh, moon, the moon occulting Mars is the big deal. Venus and Saturn in, con in conjunction, uh, getting as close to each other in the sky as they can get. Uh, Venus sliding near a bright star. Let's think about the rings of Saturn and the moons of, of Jupiter. And then you've got the moon in Leo to end the week. Uh, as, ever, as, 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 as always, everybody, thanks for watching, and uh, we hope you have a great observing week ahead.